In this video, we're going to do some detailed shear stress calculations and get a good feel for what the shear stress formula looks like and how it's applied for a given cross section. In this case, we've got an I beam here with an internal shear force of 50 kilonewtons, which was probably given from a shear diagram or something, and it's pointing upwards on the cross section. And what we want to do is calculate the shear stress at point A, the shear stress at point B, if point B were just in the flange, and then again, the shear stress at point B if it were just inside the web, and then the maximum shear stress. Really, we should all know that this maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis location. This formula right here is the shear stress formula that's given to us. So one of the first things that you want to do once you have the internal shear force is calculate some of the section properties for the beam. I have the neutral axis, which is 125 millimeters from the bottom. That's pretty simple to calculate just because the whole cross section is symmetric, about two plane. Then I went ahead and calculate the moment of inertia about the neutral axis here. I took one large rectangle and subtracted out the holes because they share the same centroid. And here I got this 1.086 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the fourth. The next thing that we want to do is go ahead and calculate shear stress at the different locations. So to calculate the shear stress at point A, know what my internal shear shear force is. I know that this V is 50. I know what I is. The width T is at the location where I want the shear stress. And so in this case here, T would be this entire width here. That would be 150 millimeters. The thing that we really want to find out is this Q, the first moment of area about the neutral axis. So you might have seen it written like this in some books. I kind of like to write it as sum of A prime times dy bar prime. But as long as you understand it's the first moment of area. And what it is is you take wherever you're interested in you take the area either all above or all below the location of interest so in, in this case I'm interested in point a I would take the area all above which is zero so in this case Q is zero and therefore tau is equal to zero hey that was easy. <laughs> so the shear stress at point A is zero. And now we want to calculate the shear stress at point B. And we know point B here is right here, right between this transition from the flange to the web here. And the first place we want to calculate is for the flange. So for the flange, what we want is the shear stress here, this tau B, I'll put tau BF, is V cubed over ITF for the flange. In this case here, V is still 50 kilonewtons. The moment of inertia is still 1.086 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the 4th. And the thickness at point B just inside the flange is the width of the flange here, which is going to be 150 millimeters. So the only thing that's left for us is to calculate QB. Capital QB, or this first moment of area, in this case, I'm interested in my shear stress at point B. I can look at either all the area above or below that location. And in this case, I'm going to look at the area above. This is my A prime that I'm interested in. This is equal to 150 times the thickness of this flange, which I believe was 25 millimeters. And the distance from the neutral axis, which is over here, to the centroid of this A bar prime. And this distance, this would be this Y bar prime or DY bar prime, whatever you would like to call it. And so here Q, B for the flange is equal to the sum of A prime times Y bar prime, which is going to be 150 millimeters times 25 millimeters times the distance, this Y bar prime, which if you recall, this distance right here is 125 millimeters. So that's going to be 125 five minus half the thickness of the flange and this is going to be 4.219 times 10 to the 5 millimeters cubed and here all I got to do is plug and chug into here and when I calculate tau bf I'm going to get 1.29 megapascals now I can do the same thing for the web and for the web tau b I call it tau bw there's only one thing that changes the shear force is the same the first moment of area is also going to be the same because I'm still interested in point b and I can take either the area above or below the moment of inertia of the entire cross section doesn't change and the only thing that changes here is that the thickness or the width at location b now is in the web which is 
20 millimeters. And when I run through the numbers here, I get 9.71 megapascals. All right, so now we wanted to calculate the maximum shear stress in the cross section. And one of the things that we know from our basic understanding of mechanics at the location of the neutral axis is where you have your maximum shear stress. So now we want to calculate the maximum shear stress, which occurs at the neutral axis. And here, nothing really changes other than the first moment of area. You know, V, the internal shear force is still 50 kilonewtons. The moment of inertia for the entire cross section is not going to change. And in fact, the width here, the thickness is going to be the width of the web, which is going to be 20 millimeters. The only thing that we need to calculate is this first moment of area. Q being equal to the sum of A prime times Y bar prime is either the first moment of area of the cross section or the remaining cross section all above the location or all below the location where I want to calculate the shear stress. And so here I have this first area and I have in purple a second area. And what I want to do is calculate the first moment of area of this and all I got to do is break up the area for the blue zone right here. I know that this is my Y bar prime of one. And then here where my centroid of area two is, this would be this distance would be y bar prime of 2. This would be area 2. This would be area 1. Again, the first moment of area about the neutral axis is a1 times y1 bar prime plus a2 times y2 bar prime. And all these numbers are in millimeters, and so this comes out to be 5.219 times 10 to the 5 millimeters cubed. With this tau max, if you plug and chug, is equal to 12.01 megapascals. And again, you can see as, as you go down the cross section here, the Q gets larger and larger, and the shear stress is, is essentially growing. And you have this discontinuity here where the flange goes from a width of the flange to the width of the web, and then you see this jump in shear stress because the, the width of that cross section decreases. All right, so now I want to draw my shear stress profile based on some of the calculations that I already made at A, B, and, and, and the maximum shear stress. The thing you have to remember when you draw the shear stress profile is two things. One, the shear stress profile is parabolic. Two, the max is at the neutral axis. If you can remember that, you can, you're pretty good. And so here, if I, if I do this in red, at point A, I knew my shear stress is zero. At point B, just inside the flange, I knew my shear stress here is 1.29 megapascals. Then I know that when I go just to the web, I have this jump here, which inside the web here of all the way to 9.71 megapascals. It continues to increase parabolically until you reach a maximum, which I'll draw that right about here. And that value was 12.01 megapascals. And now if I want to, I, got, I just remember that it's increasing parabolically. And so here I have like this, I have a discontinuity, a jump. And here it's parabolic again to that point the 12 megapascals again it's just gonna be symmetric as well because the cross-section is symmetric so I'm gonna so this is what my shear stress profiles looks like or the intensity of the shear stress at each of these points along the cross-section the direction of the shear stress though is like this okay so I draw little arrows for small intensities and then it increases here big arrows and then again little arrows the size of the arrows are also varying parabolically because really what they do is they correspond to this arrow corresponds to a specific value of the shear stress up to here all right so hopefully that was helpful and let me know if you have any questions see ya